A pleasant morning, my dear students. Welcome back to the contemporary world. How are you today? I hope you're having a great day. This time, before we proceed in our discussion, let's be inspired and motivated. However difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. Believe in yourself, because greatness is within you. Keep going, you are born to succeed. Last meeting, you have learned the global interstate system. Always remember, global interstate system, it is the whole system of human interactions. The modern world system is structured politically as an interstate system, a system of competing and aligned states. Political scientists commonly call this the international system, and it is the main focus of the field of international relations. Today, my dear students, we will talk about contemporary global governance as part of the structures of globalization. We have three learning outcomes to achieve by the end of this lesson. First, identify the rules and functions of the United Nations. Second, identify the challenges of global governance in the 21st century. Third, explain the relevance of the state amid globalization. Many emerging trends brought about by globalization need governance to maintain world order. We have booming e-commerce, companies operating in multiple countries, music and movie industry, increasing foreign travel for business or tourism, international sports, events, and healthcare. All the countries or governments need to coexist in peace, harmony, in a spirit of cooperation, or have a just system for conflict resolution. However, there is no such thing as a world government. What is global governance? And what it does. There are cases where countries have internal problems but they cannot solve their problem on their own. There are cases where groups of countries have problems with each other but they cannot solve their problem by themselves. Global governance is needed to facilitate relations within countries and amongst countries, organizations, and markets through a set of norms, policies, laws, codes of conduct, or regulations. In cases where states do not have capacity to solve problems on their own, global governance is needed. There are several factors behind the emergence of global governance. First is a decline of power of the nation-states. Second is the 
is the permeability of nation states to vast flows of things. Third is the mass migration of people and flow of criminal elements. Fourth is the internal events or problems which nation states cannot control. And last is the global problems that a single nation state is unable to tackle on their own. Other actors are becoming more powerful such as global corporations with the increasing economic prowess of multinational corporations in key areas such as energy, food, transport, healthcare, they yield a strong influence on many global policies. Global civil society organizations likewise have established historical credibility, relevance and effectiveness in helping resolve problems in times of conflict or disaster. They also have a strong voice and influence on global matters. Another factor behind the emergence of global governance is the permeability of nation-states to vast flows of things. For example, the easy, fast, and difficult to control flow of digital information has triggered the need of global governance. Sex trafficking and import, export, pushing of illegal drugs are just some forms of unlawful activities that need strong regulatory policies. International cooperation and effective implementation of law for the protection of many vulnerable and marginalized members of society. This calls for global governance. Internal events or problems which nation states either instigate or are unable to control on their own. An example is the crisis in Sudan, which led to deaths and displacement. However, the Sudanese government has been resistant to outside interference in its internal affairs. Global problems that a single nation state is unable to tackle on their own. An example is the global financial crisis that have often victimized nation states. State as well as non-state actors work together to come up with mutually beneficial global governance. There is no central authority in global governance, but the United Nations with its 193 state membership and capability to involve many non-state actors come close as to being a central authority to raise global issues and to help resolve them. What is the United Nations? It is a global organization composed of 193 nation states while a wide network of international organizations, treaties, and conventions. It fosters cooperation among nation states to address global problems together. It was founded in 1945 after World War II. Why do we have the United Nations? After the end of the First World War, 
the League of Nations was created to prevent another war. During World War II, it was eliminated because it failed to prevent another war. In 1945, with World War II almost ending, the United Nations was created to replace the failed League of Nations. There are six main bodies of the United Nations. These are the General Assembly, Security Council, Economic and Social Council, Secretariat Trusteeship Council, and the International Court of Justice. The Trusteeship Council ceased its operations in 1994. The General Assembly is the main deliberative body of the United Nations, where all representatives of member states meet to express their views, deliberate, and vote on global issues. Under the General Assembly are six programs, namely the United Development Program, World Food Program, Environmental Program, UNICEF, UN Women, and UN Habitat. The Security Council has the primary responsibility of maintaining international peace and security. The group is composed of United States, Britain, Russia, China, and France as permanent members, with 10 other non-permanent members on a two-year term. The Security Council has four committees, namely the Counter-Terrorism Committee, the Military Staff Committee, the Peacekeeping Operations, and the Political Mission. The Economic and Social Council coordinates the economic, social, and other related matters along with the specialized agencies and organizations. The specialized agencies and other bodies are FAO, IMF, UNESCO, WHO, Committee on NGOs, Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. The Economic and Social coordinates the economic, social, and other related matters along with the specialized agencies and organizations. The Secretariat assists the other bodies and committees while performing varied tasks. The Secretariat assists the other bodies and committees while performing varied tasks, such as the Executive Office of the Secretary General, UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, Department of Global Communications. The Trusteeship Council provided international supervision for trust territories to attain self-government and independence. The Council suspended its operations after the last of the trust territories attained independence in 1994. The International Court of Justice is also referred to as the World Court, the Peace Palace in Hague, Netherlands provides the venue for countries to settle disputes inside a court of law. The United Nations has also played and will continue to play for essential roles in identifying and diagnosing problems and therefore filling the gaps. First, we have 
managing knowledge. Second, developing norms. Third, formulating recommendations. And fourth, institutionalizing ideas. The first role of the United Nations is managing knowledge. The first step in addressing a problem is to recognize its existence. Next is to collect solid data about the nature of the problem and understand its causes to explain the problem. The second role of the United Nations is developing norms. Once a problem has been identified and it is serious enough to warrant attention by the international policy community, the United Nations helps to institutionalize new norms of behavior. Nations with different cultures, languages, and administrative habits are also have different accepted standards of state behavior. But how do contested norms become institutionalized both within and among states? Third, role of the United Nations in addressing problems is formulating recommendations. As new problems arise and new, no new norms emerge, they highlight gaps in policy that also need attention. The next step is to formulate a range of responsibilities on changing behaviors of governments, citizens, and international organizations. The fourth role of the United Nations is institutionalizing ideas. An institution is an example of the impact of ideas. Once knowledge is acquired, norms articulated and policies formulated. An existing institution can oversee their implementation and monitoring. Since 1945, the United Nations has been a champion of these global concerns, preventing and managing conflicts, regulating our armed arrangements, championing human rights and international humanitarian law, liberating the colonized, providing economic and technical aid in newly liberated countries, organizing elections, empowering women, educating children, feeding the hungry, sheltering the dispossessed and displaced, housing the refugees, tending to the sick, and coordinating disaster relief and assistance. To help us understand the beginnings and roles of United Nations, I'm going to send I'm going to send on our class GZ the link of this video and please watch it to learn more about the United Nations. Moving forward. As discussed, global governance is needed in today's modern world more than ever before, but global governance continues to face many challenges, such as the vast disparities in power and influence among state and state actors, indistinct and diffuse authority, decentralized and informed self-regulatory groups, UN and other actors are inadequately resourced. Global governance actors are sometimes incoherent in their policy. Despite being the largest organized global governance body, the United Nations remains to have gaps and limitations. 
The major gaps and limitations of the United Nations are operates mainly as a forum for states to air their differences, not solve problems. No ability to prevent many atrocities and genocides around the world. States do not get sanctions for wars they created. States can evade international laws without consequences. Despite the best efforts of United Nations, problems still exist because some individuals or groups challenge and defy the norms and laws and the United Nations locks the process and procedures for enforcing compliance with these international norms and laws. As you can see the screen, we have there the problem, the, the HIV AIDS. So in order to prevent the problem, people should practice safe sex. Education and awareness campaigns of the symptoms and causes of HIV AIDS, public behavior towards people who are HIV AIDS positive. So, the United Nations implemented joint UN program on HIV AIDS to overcome the spread of HIV AIDS. Challenges of global governance in the 21st century Some key challenges we have the nationalistic interest. Different national agenda or preference make it challenging to get cooperation for the sake of global interest. Country leaders always have to face a balancing act or to give in or make hard and popular decisions to go against international norms. Example, issues on pollution control, territorial disputes. Lot of consensus. There is a notion that major powers are often reluctant to engage less prominent stakeholders on issues. Thus, it is difficult to come up with a common vision and agreed action plan. Example, nuclear energy policies. Up next, we have in this thing and diffuse authority. While there are international laws, states can evade them with no major consequences. Most states assert their sovereignty when faced with international disputes. Example, human rights issues, immigration issues. We also have incoherent or lack of policies. With the speed of technological change and the global issues ethical dilemmas that go with them, global governance is too slow to catch up. In today's digital world, the challenges is how best to maintain free flow of information while having appropriate policies to curb cyber aggregation. Incoherent or lack of policies. With the speed of technological change and the global issues ethical dilemmas that go with them, global governance is too slow to catch up in today's digital world. The challenge is how best to maintain free flow of information while having appropriate policies to curb cyber aggression. There are schools of thought who argue that the state is becoming irrelevant because it cannot 
keep up with globalization. On one hand, others argue that the state is more relevant now because it can influence the direction of globalization. Is the state still relevant? But these two arguments miss the point. A state legitimacy is not based on how it can effectively handle globalization. Rather, how effective can it utilize its public goods versus the other actors in this ongoing process of globalization? There are certainly cases of states that are incompetent and where other actors are more effective in addressing some specific issues. However, until or unless some actors can perform better the services that states do now in a macro scale, then the state will continue to be a major force in the globalization. As globalization shapes the states, the state shapes globalization. Always remember this. Faced with globalization, states have to deal with global international concerns in addition to its internal affairs. Some examples of global concerns are terrorism, threat of foreign competition, immigration, and environmental protection. The relevance of the state amid globalization. We have the definition. The terms state and nation so far have been used interchangeably, but it is important to distinguish the two. When we say state, it refers to the distinctive political community with its own government, which asserts sovereignty over its land and people. Nation refers to socially constructed communities that hold together people bound by common history and culture, carrying across some identities such as ethnicity, language, and religion. The difference between nation and the state. A nation is bound by history, culture, and identity. The state is composed of four elements, people, government, territory, and sovereignty. To, be, to put it simply, the nation state is the result of merging these two concepts. The nation state is a sovereign institution which governs individuals sharing a collective history, culture, and identity with a bounded territory. The state is considered the representative of the people. The people is the source of the state sovereignty. It is the people who give the state its legitimacy. Now, we have the conclusion and summary of this lesson. An effective global governance maximizes the state and non-state partnerships and collective action. United Nations is a pivotal organization in global governance. It faces many challenges, has limitations, but it is the closest 
that we all have in terms of a world government. Today, states have an even bigger role to play beyond internal affairs. Due to globalization, states have to deal with, despite the many challenges of globalization, there is no turning back. Each of us has a role to play. We need to think about how its benefits could outweigh its risk. So here are some major takeaways from this lesson. As you can see on your screen, there is globalization. Globalization affects the state, non-state actors, as well as the United Nations. Two, the community and you is a part of globalization. And you have important hero to play. With the increasingly complex, diverse, and interdependent world is the emergence of many global issues which need collective solutions. These call for global governance. Because of the wide scope of global governance, there are many challenges, but the rewards of successfully overcoming them are also great and with far-reaching effects, not only for us, but for the future generation. Stop, think, share. Share your most essential learning about the contemporary global governance. Pose your answers on the comment section below this video. Please follow this format. Surname, given name, middle name, and below, put your block, is it A or B, then proceed with your answers. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more educational video updates. Thank you so much.